Fantastic presentation. Really, really enjoyed it. Uh, my name is Paul Kretko. I'm the president and CEO of Ann Arbor Spark. And we have 12 minutes. I'm going to share with you uh, a, about a three and a half minute video that we produced on this topic about Ann Arbor um, that we use um, as we try to build the economy here. So I'm waiting. This was, I was told that this all works very well. And I'll dance in between. There's a concept that springs forth from food called terroir, and that is that the food that is grown in a region is reflective, literally, of the earth that the plants that grow that fruit are planted in. And I think this area has that terroir to it. There is something that happens to the businesses and the people who live here that is actually born out of the, out of the earth, if you will. I think people have always thought about the University of Michigan first, but the fact is there's a fantastic business community here. There's just great intellectual leadership here. And it runs right up against a community that actually knows how to make stuff. The products that we produce, the products that we develop here are innovative, they're patented. We still see and have the same kind of ingenuity, entrepreneurship, and really strong engineering core talent that really allows us to create products that will change the world. We've been able to put in about a third less in capital than what the companies on the coast that would be doing exactly the same things would take. The people here are extremely hardworking and very creative about how they get products developed. So they figured out ways to do it that just cost less to do. You know, business thrives here. But we also found a very welcoming community uh, in Ann Arbor whether it was the surrounding businesses or frankly whether it was groups like Spark, people are attracted to Ann Arbor because of what it offers uh, as a community. This town helps me attract that talent. This state helps me attract that talent because they love being here. Our employees love coming into work. They're happy to live in Ann Arbor. It's a low cost of living with a high amount of happiness and with a Silicon Valley-like culture. The thing I love about Ann Arbor is the fact that it is such a nice combination of being able to have a great work and family balance, being able to raise kids here in a great school system. The reason why I don't move to San Francisco and start Arboretum there is because I want my kids to grow up here in Ann Arbor. As a transportation hub, it's actually, it's actually spectacular. I mean, flying in and out of Detroit Metro around the world, we've got direct connections uh, from here into Asia, into, uh, into Europe, and even down into Latin America. You can get on one plane and get to virtually any part of the world uh, on a non-stop direct flight. That is an amazing asset for a community like us. We certainly have close connections to the state of Michigan uh, through one of our founders um, and to the University of Michigan, but we really see great talent here in Michigan. Ultimately, it's about access to talent. That's what drives companies. That's how great companies continue to build and grow. And we've done really well with that here. There are a lot of universities here with a lot of really smart people developing a lot of really cool technologies. I think the future of Ann Arbor business is extremely bright. We are now being recognized as one of the entrepreneurial centers of the United States. In life sciences, in advanced manufacturing, um, in automotive research and development, um, and in IT, you've got all of the right ingredients. It's got the recipe for success with great research universities, a great talent pool, a business community that's savvy. For me personally, Pure Michigan says, welcome home. I think for a lot of people, maybe it even says, welcome back. And for anybody who's coming to visit or to stay, it just simply says, welcome. We'd love to have you here. Again, what we're trying to do with this kind of imagery is not have people like me talk uh, to talent or talented individuals or to people starting businesses or people that want to expand their business. It's these actual people that are doing it speaking. Um, so I'm going to take you through a little bit about how we approach this, but you're going to hear some themes that Colleen already raised. Uh, I've been doing this for almost 35 years around the United States. Uh, worked for a number of mayors in big cities, and um, all of them uh, ultimately come to the conclusion of the importance of place. But not only that, that your place in the global economy is dependent upon your 
distinct assets that you have. There was a long time in America and around the world that people tried to be like other communities. Uh, you remember the festival marketplace that uh, developed in Boston, and city after city tried that. Or we're going to create a pedestrian mall, and that's going to be the savior for us. The real issue is, is that the local uh, community determines what's best for itself in, in developing its assets and moving forward. Spark's place in that, in this creating the terroir of this region, is about um, the regional economy itself. Um, if your economy is not growing, um, you won't achieve the results of the kinds of things that um, Colleen showed you on the slides, because communities need resources to build those things. If your economy isn't growing, um, things cost more every day, you won't be able to, to achieve that. So what Spark does is we focus, well, this is our vision or our notion of the economy. And we focus on the driving industries, and I'm going to talk about that real quickly. Um, these are just some examples. Um, we work on comp with companies in new technology, mainly in a gardening way, uh, in the sense that we are trying to grow startups and early stage companies here to sell products around the world. Um, and these are some examples of what that cluster is. And the importance of that is um, you, you sell to do domestic and global markets, and those dollars flow back into your community. So it's for Romo Heart. Um, they sell uh, the equipment, almost every uh, open heart surgery in the world uses their equipment, both the equipment, the heart lung machine, but also the equipment for actually for the surgery. Those dollars flow into our community, creating good paying jobs, which then support the other types of jobs in our community. And um, as you do that, visitors come to visit those businesses to work with them to visit the community and that brings dollars into the community and then creates more and more jobs uh, for businesses that support driving industries and for businesses that actually um, the workers buy goods and services from. Underpinning all that, uh, so the two things Spark works on is the top box, driving industry, and then the bottom box. And we do the bottom box with an array of partners um, throughout the community. These are the things, and I think they reinforce some of the things that Colleen said uh, about that what you need is a community. I want to really emphasize the importance of collaborative leadership and efficient business environment. Uh, businesses can grow anywhere once they start here. If, if they can't uh, feel that this is a good place to plant their seed, to grow, um, they'll look elsewhere. So quickly, uh, these are some basic uh, concepts, the way I approach um, how we are growing or should grow an economy uh, regionally. First thing is that sustainable and re re resilient regions must grow their GDP. Um, look at any community in which their businesses are not selling goods and services outside their region, um, the closed plant. Um, Detroit is a case study in that. What happens when your GDP collapses? You don't have money for basics, even e not all the good things that we want to build, you don't even have it for the basic services, police and fire. So it's absolutely critical that we at all times in, in a regional economy are trying to grow uh, our, our, our portion of the gross domestic product. Um, and again, as I just said, we do that by selling goods and services outside our region. And startups, and we're going to reinforce the message that Colleen had, that startups and mature companies need talented, knowledgeable workers to create uh, goods and services. The, today's economy, and you've heard this many places, and I think this is a, probably a very um, intelligent and educated and well-read audience, um, that um, companies, uh, the, the life of companies now is the people that work in them. It's not the being close to water. It's not uh, close to uh, iron ore. It's not all those things that drove the economy in past centuries. Uh, we talked about this already, and, and the statistic that, that Colleen cited was, this, was one study was done by a group called CEOs for Cities, who said that 65% uh, of uh, talented graduates, um, whether they be under, you know, undergraduates, graduate students, or postgraduate, uh, choose where to work uh, before who to work for. And so that means the quality of where um, is paramount. Um, and quality, uh, which I'm, I'm going to maybe dispute something uh, that Colleen said, but then when she then put in her slides, you actually saw that it's a different lifestyle. Um, quality is really defined by post-baby boom uh, workforce very differently from uh, the baby boom 
uh, uh, workforce. Um, and, and one of the, the well-known and renowned authors in this area uh, is Richard Florida, and I shared with you uh, books that if you probably have heard of the rise of the creative class, but his more recent book, books about who's your city and the Great Reset, um, really, well, the Great Reset is really saying that we are in the middle of the third Great Reset in the American economy um, that, that uh, has occurred since the beginning of the country. And it will have dramatic changes in how we do everything uh, moving forward. But he points out three principles, he calls them the three T's, uh, of, of how you are going to be a successful place. Um, he describes them as spiky places, sticky places. And if you look around the world, you'll see these. These are places where people want to go to, and they, they stick and they stay there. The first is, does the underlying community have the technological infrastructure um, for them? Does it have um, uh, uh, broadband ubiquitously everywhere? Um, is it free? Um, are, are there access to all kinds of, of resources to uh, potentially start and build a business, whether that be uh, incubators, accelerators like Spark Runs, <clears throat> or, or, or an array of other programs? The other one is really, really important. I think it's, it gives, it's a reason why Ann Arbor is successful. Um, I, before I came here, I, I worked for a decade in Silicon Valley as a chief development officer for the city of San Jose. And many people talk about why uh, Silicon Valley happened and why it continues to be successful. I will tell you that I think this is the biggest reason. People from all over the world, regardless of uh, where they came from, what community they were in, what their uh, sexual preference is, what their uh, uh, political viewpoints are, uh, find that they can come there and be free to express themselves and to find others that they want to um, be with and work with. Um, and I think that's something that Ann Arbor has um, and is, is very going to be very key um, to our competitive uh, uh, position regionally and globally. Um, and that this is to the point I just made. Is there a clustering of people that I can, I can be a part of? And one of the things that this generation really does, the, the subsequent generations that are, that are moving through the demographic cohort, um, they want to be engaged uh, and participate. And so that's what they're looking for in a community. So I, I'm just uh, I'm sh sharing a particular example that I like, um, not saying that Ann Arbor should be Vancouver because we are significantly um, uh, scale and size less, but think about the community. And, and the, the point I'm trying to make is let's take maybe you, maybe a tenth of that for, An for Ann Arbor's downtown. What do you see? You see density, and we talked about um, that um, uh, people want to live and they're voting with their feet to move to dense places. Um, it's a highly sustainable lifestyle. I, I, f the average New York resident, city resident, environmental footprint is 50% less than someone living in suburban track housing. But when you look a little closer at the community, you see the green and the sp public spaces sprinkled throughout this. These aren't just towers that front on the street, they front on plazas, they step back. The, the, um, the, the engagement with the street in Vancouver, if you've been there, you know are three and four story buildings. The towers sit in the middle of the blocks and it creates this great dynamism. Um, and if you think about this picture, it's something that we're blessed with. A, a significant natural beauty uh, surrounds Ann Arbor and is easily accessible uh, from a dense urban core. And, and so uh, you have uh, the last slide for, for Vancouver is this is the kind of Vancouver is the kind of design that you see at the street level. You see it's very engaging, it's walkable, um, but it has significant residential density, allows for work, residential, and um, all the other cultural and commercial amenities that you want. And clearly, what we have to be mindful of is, is if we pursue a program that are, is trying to build our attractiveness, um, we need to make room for um, uh, the jobs in, that are selling goods and services to the world uh, right in the core of our city. And we have that. You saw on the side, Barracuda Networks moved into the uh, old the, the, uh, uh, Borders bookstore. Um, uh, Menlo Innovations went in the bottom of a parking garage on Liberty Street. People want to be and work in this dense environment. So for our region to succeed economically, the relationship between place and talent um, is the whole game. Thanks a lot. I look forward to your questions. Thank you.